In chapter four of my book, How to Avoid a High Wire Retirement, I talk about a simple rule or technique that um, people can use to balance risk and reward. Uh, it's referred to as the 100 minus age rule. And it's been used for a number of years by a good number of people quite effectively. Every investment, every financial instrument that you could place your retirement savings into has a different degree of risk associated with it and also has a different degree of reward associated with it. So first, all of those different instruments, basically we're gonna place them on a pyramid and where we're going to place them is going to be dependent upon the degree of risk and reward that they have. Generally, the greater the degree of market risk, the higher up on the pyramid that they're gonna be placed. And the lower the degree of market risk, the lower on the pyramid that financial instrument is going to be placed. So generally speaking, as you select vehicles that are up here at the top of the pyramid, you're gonna get a greater reward. Generally, that's how that works. The expected earnings, the expected return from that instrument should be higher. But there is a link between risk and reward that says that as your rewards increase, also the risk increases as well. And it's important to define what kind of risk we're referring to. And specifically, we're talking about the risk of market-based losses. Now, there's a lot of people as they approach retirement or as they get into retirement, they say, geez, I really don't want a lot of market risk. So I'm just gonna stick with these vehicles down here lower on the pyramid. And that may be effective in that it may reduce the amount of exposure you have to risk. But at the same time, what that's going to do is it's gonna reduce your potential rewards as well. So the problem is that as you reduce that potential reward, you expose yourself to different forms of risk. Things like inflation or the possibility of lasting longer than our savings, outliving our savings. Well, if you spend all your retirement years where your nest egg has very little growth, very little returns, you're gonna increase your exposure to these risks. So you can see that really the, the objective is how do you balance these risks? Well, that's where the 100 minus age rule comes in. And basically, it's pretty darn simple to follow this rule. You take the number 100, and all you do is you subtract your age from it. So let's say that somebody is 65. They subtract 65 from 100. Of course, the result is 35. And this determines their allocation. This determines how they allocate their savings among the various instruments on this financial pyramid. So if the circle represents your entire nest egg and you're following this rule, then basically what you would do is you'd say, okay, well, I am gonna limit 35% of my portfolio is gonna be subjected to market risk. It's gonna give me the opportunity for greater returns. It's gonna have greater risk associated. I'm gonna keep the majority of my nest egg I'm gonna protect that from market risk. I'm gonna use that for these vehicles that are down lower on this pyramid. Now the key to following the 100 minus age rule is, is that periodically you reallocate. So as you get older, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this mix. As an example, let's say that you ultimately turn age 80. You subtract 80 from 100, the result is 20, and now that's your allocation to risk. So as you age, what you're doing is that you're exposing less of your nest egg to market risk. And it makes sense if you think about it because the older that we get, the less time we have to be around to recover from any market losses. So the idea is the older we get, the less exposure we want to that, that market risk. And again, the 100 minus age rule, it's very effective, it's proven to be effective, it's helped a good number of people, and part of the reason that it's successful is it's, it's very simple to follow. Um, 
It's, it's one of the, it, I think it's one of the foundations of retirement planning, and that's one of the reasons that I cover it pretty extensively in chapter four of my book.